Greetings and thanks for choosing to worship with us online. I'm Pastor Don Fitzkey and I'm glad that you find this ministry of the Lancaster Church of the Brethren worth the investment of your time. I'm confident that this service will be a source of encouragement to you as our other services have been. We're happy to have Jim Wren as our preacher this morning speaking on the topic, Where Do You Find God? Jim is continuing our Our Lives in a Country Song sermon series and this week's song is Where I Find God by Larry Fleet. If you haven't listened to that song, we encourage you to pause now and listen to it online. It'll help you to understand the sermon a little better. I think you can find the link in the description of this video or just search it online, Where I Find God by Larry Fleet. Jim Wren is a longtime pastor and member of our congregation and is one of the most positive and encouraging people you will ever meet. I'm pretty sure he owns stock in a company that makes note cards because he regularly sends cards with encouraging words. So we look forward to hearing what Jim has to say, and you can read the names of the other participants in today's service in the video description. I would note that we have begun to meet in person on Sundays at 1030, and when you're ready to venture out, you would be welcome to join us in the Family Life Center. We practice physical distancing and require masks. We're also making plans for an outdoor service on September 13th that you may want to attend. That one will be preceded by an outdoor breakfast. More details will be coming on that. I want to remind members of our congregation to please keep an eye out for some mail that will come from the church in the next few days. We mentioned it in our weekly Friday bulletin. You can read more about it there. We're asking you to vote on three ministerial issues, including the calling of Jamie Nace to a full-time role in the congregation. So please open your mail when it comes, prayerfully discern how you'd like to vote, and then send your postcard ballot back as quickly as you can. If you're viewing this service and do not receive our weekly email communications, we encourage you to email the church office and get on that list. Finally, we've been playing croquet the last few Sundays on the church lawn on Sunday afternoons, but we'll be taking a week off. So join us again on Sunday, August 30th from 2 to 4 p.m. to come and play or just to sit and visit outside. As we turn our attention to worship, I invite you to join in singing one of the great hymns of the church, How Great Thou Art.
Today I have with me this nice, soft, warm, cuddly blanket. Our family loves this blanket. When one of us is sick, we'll cuddle up under the blanket and it helps us to feel just a little bit better. When it's cold outside and it starts to get chilly inside, sometimes we'll all snuggle under this blanket on the couch to keep warm. Our dog Coco loves this blanket too. She loves to jump up and curl right up on top of it to keep warm. Sometimes she'll even wiggle her entire self underneath the blanket if she's really cold. This blanket is a great source of comfort for our family. Do you know what else is a great source of comfort? God. God promises to always be there to comfort us in our times of need. How do we get this comfort from God? Do we just sit there and wish that God would comfort us? Well, the comfort from God comes when we pray to God, when we ask God for his peace, when we ask God to comfort us, when we're sad or troubled or even angry, we can pray and ask God for his comfort. We can also feel God's comfort by looking for God in the things and the people around us. We might see God's presence in a beautiful rainbow or in a pretty bird that's decided to sit at our bird feeder. We might see or feel God's presence in the comfort of another person who gives us a big hug or calls us on the phone to talk to us. Friends, God is everywhere. He is all around us. And even though the Bible tells us that God's ways are not our ways, God does see things differently. God does promise to always comfort us and to always bring us peace in times of trouble. So friends, when you are feeling troubled, reach out to God. Look for God in the things and the people around you and be blessed. Have a great day.
I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, the psalmist said of you, the heavens declare your glory, the skies proclaim the work of your hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they reveal knowledge. And we're grateful for the many ways that you reveal yourself to us as we see your signature in a summer sunset, your power in a storm, your provision in fields and gardens, your presence in quiet moments, your truth in the pages of the Bible. God, there's so much noise and confusion in our world that makes it hard for people to find you. In these times, we ask you to calm and quiet our anxious spirits so that we can clearly hear your voice and not give in to worry or anger or fear. Help us to see you at work in good times and bad, recognizing that you are the source of every blessing and capable of transforming every challenge and heartache. God, we're so grateful that you sent your Son to be our Savior and Lord. Help us this week to follow Jesus so that others may be pointed to God by the manner of our speaking and living as followers of Jesus. Open our eyes to divine interruptions when you provide unexpected opportunities to share your love and grace. We're grateful, God, that you continue to call out people to serve you in special ways. We thank you for the calls to ministry of Matt, Bob, and Jamie and the various stages of the journey that they are on. We ask for your Spirit's guidance as we vote to affirm those callings in various ways in the coming week. We pray that others in our congregation also will heed your call through the church to serve and lead in various roles within our congregation. And as we serve, remind us that the work is yours and not just ours, and it's our privilege to participate in your work. Gracious God, as children and teachers head back to school, we ask for safety and for a successful educational year. We ask for your protection for all of the children and adults involved in our preschool program at the church. Watch over them. And we pray especially for families with children who are balancing work and school and parenting responsibilities. Give them the strength that they need. We pray today especially for one little girl in our church family who needs your healing touch. God, we ask you to heal Ruby and other members of her family who are not feeling well. Give them courage and strength. We pray for many others in our church who are hurting or lonely or anxious, uncertain about their future. We pray that you would suit a blessing to each one, providing healing to the sick, comfort to the hurting, encouragement to the downcast, assurance for those nearing the end of life, hope of a brighter future for each of us. God, we don't always understand why things happen as they do, but we acknowledge that your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts. Your ways and thoughts are higher than ours. And so we express our trust in you, even in our most challenging times. Remind us to seek you where you may be found and entrust our cares and our very lives to you. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 9. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Trappist monk Thomas Merton, in his book, The Sign of Jonas, which is essentially daily journal excerpts from the beginning of his life in the Abbey of Our Lady of Gethsemane, a monastery in Kentucky, writes in the prologue of that book, Like the prophet Jonas, whom God ordered to go to Nineveh, I found myself with an un almost uncontrollable desire to go in the opposite direction. God pointed one way, and all my ideals pointed in the other. It was when Jonas was traveling as fast as he could away from Nineveh toward Tarsus that he was thrown overboard and swallowed by a whale who took him where God wanted him to go. Jonah found God in the belly of a whale, and later on in Nineveh, two of the most unlikely places where God might be found. The question then is, where do you find God? Country singer Larry Fleet sings the refrain in his song, Where I Find God, from a bar stool to that Evan Rood, Sunday morning in a church pew, in a deer stand or a hayfield, an interstate back to Nashville, in a Chevrolet with the windows down, me and him just riding round, sometimes whether I'm looking for him or not, that's where I find God. My challenge to each and every one of us is to keep the eyes of our heart open, for we will find God in the most unlikely places. Let's look brief briefly at Jonah this morning, for he found God in some unlikely places, to which Thomas Merton, in his quote, alludes. Chapter 1 of Jonah, verse 1, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son, son of Amittai, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. Jonah boards a ship for Tarshish, and on the way, a violent storm comes up. The crew of the ship is frightened, to say the least. And after a conversation with Jonah, he requests to be thrown overboard to calm the storm. Again, chapter 1, verse 12. Pick me up and throw me into the sea, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. So overboard, Jonah goes. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, says verse 17, and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. There, of all places, Jonah finds God. 
From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord God. And these are the first nine verses of chapter 2. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me, seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down, the earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. It does sound like Jonah found God in the belly of a whale. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. Jonah prays that. Salvation comes from the Lord. So Jonah finds God in the belly of a whale. And so again, I challenge us, keep the eyes of our heart open, for we will find God in the most unlikely places. In chapter 2, at the end, verse 10, let me just share a few verses. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah unto dry land. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Let's talk about a bit about Nineveh. Jonah was sure initially when God first called him that he would not find God there. James Bruckner in his commentary on Jonah writes, Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, was Israel's worst enemy and the bane of the ancient world. They were a powerful and well-developed civilization known for their brutal and grisly treatment of their enemies. Jonah's response to God's directive can be understood as fear, rebellion, or moral opposition to God's mercy. Jonah is not interested in participating in the redemption of this particular enemy. But God, friends, had preceded Jonah there, and when Jonah preached, the Ninevites listened. Chapter 3, verse 5, the Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. Jonah found God in the ugly, wicked city of the enemy. Keep the eyes of your heart open, for you will find God in the most unlikely places. Some of you know that back in 1991, I was called by the Ephrata Church of the Brethren and the Atlantic Northeast District of our denomination to plant a church in northeastern Lancaster County in the Reamstown, Denver area. One of the challenges among the many that we faced was finding a place to meet. We checked the possibility of meeting in one of the fire company facilities in that area or maybe meeting in one of the local schools. We checked out other leads that came our way, but nothing was available. We were without a place to meet, and our launch Sunday was fast approaching. Finally, through some unusual circumstances, and I definitely, definitely believe God had everything to do with this, we found out about a small church in Reamstown that had dwindled to just five members. They had a fine facility in which they were meeting, and which they themselves had built. But for obvious reasons, it was looking more and more like they could not continue as a congregation. We approached them about the possibility of selling their facility. Now you need to understand that there was no for sale sign in front of the facility, and they had not made up their mind yet to sell. The five last members were open to, talk, open to talking with us. We met several times with them, and those meetings began and closed with prayer. The unappointed leader of the group was a well-known and thought-of local businessman. And as we worked with him, he became one of our strongest supporters in the community. He contacted their denominations 
and work through all the legalities of the sale. In fact, he proposed that the group donate part of the sale proceeds back to us. He was also at our first worship service, and while he did not become a member of the congregation, he would attend from time to time. I share this story to emphasize the point that you will find God in the most unlikely places. One of the cardinal rules of church planning is that a church plant should not take up residence in a facility where the congregation has died. The stench of death, the church planning experts say, is not conducive to church growth. I can tell you many stories about how God worked in the lives of people in 1991 and thereafter to form a congregation. I could tell you about our first baptisms in a spring in a meadow not far from the church. I could tell you about the number of pastors that have come out of that congregation and are presently serving throughout our denomination. Almost 30 years later, the East Cacalico Church of the Brethren still provides ministry to persons in the Reamstown, Denver area. On March 31st, 1991, God was found in a building where one congregation had died and another resurrected. The sanctuary that morning was filled to capacity with a new family of faith. You do find God in the most unlikely places. You heard Isaiah read this morning. He prophesied, seek the Lord while he may be found, call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my or your ways my ways, declares the Lord. I do show up in places like Nineveh. I do show up in the belly of a whale. And I do show up in the building of a congregation that has died. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Where do you find God? We expect to find God as we worship together for sure. We expect to find God in a Sunday school class or a Bible study. We expect to find God in our prayer or devotional time. Larry Fleet sings, sometimes whether I'm looking for him or not, that's where I find God. Keep the eyes of your heart open, for you will find God in the most unlikely places. I came across this article in LMP two weeks ago. The title of it is, Gus's Spreads Positivity. After Kelly Bordadanaki fulfilled a regular customer's takeout breakfast order in April, the customer handed her an envelope. Borda Danaki, manager of the Mount Joy location of Gus's Keystone Family Restaurant, says the envelope had only restaurant owner Gus Corgellis' name written on it. The customer, who wished to remain anonymous, had one request. Can you make sure that Gus gets this? Borda Danaki agreed and placed the envelope under the cash register where Corgellis could find it. And once Corgellis found the envelope, he asked Borda Danaki, who gave it to her. She told him what had transpired and his response surprised her. Well, there was a thousand dollars in there. Then Gus Corgellis and his employees who worked directly with customers discussed how to use the donation. They decided to distribute the money by giving out $20 restaurant gift cards to customers who they thought needed it the most. We felt that this was the best thing to do with the money, Gus Corgellis said. Three months later, the restaurant chain's Ephrata location received another $1,000 from a different individual. Once again, Gus Corgellis decided to pay it forward to the community in the form of gift cards. Gus's Keystone Family Restaurants is a chain of establishments with two locations in Lancaster County, one in Mount Joy and one in Ephrata. Gus Corgellis says the second donation was from a member of the Lancaster Evangelical Free Church in Lidditz, who stopped by the restaurant and wrote a check for $1,000. The church was donating to a few businesses in the area and Gus's was one of the businesses they selected for a donation, said Leah Corgellis, manager of the Ephrata location and Gus Corgellis' daughter. They wanted to support us to make sure 
that will still be around, Leah Corgellis said. Leah Corgellis was shocked by the donation. She was also grateful that the church whose members often visit the restaurant made a donation. It's nice to see the community come together and try to do things for other people when so many people are going through uncertain times, Leah Corgellis said. The donation was used for additional $20 gift cards and allowed Gus to hand out 100 gift cards in total. The servers at Gus's started giving out the gift cards around July 21. Many of those same customers who received the gift cards still stop and thank Gus and his staff for something else they did earlier this year. About a month after temporarily closing both locations due to COVID-19 on March 16th, Gus and his staff held a free drive through Easter meal for the local community. It was the first event Gus has had since closing. It was such a big, it was such a big acceptance by the community, we'll probably be doing it as an annual event, said Gus Corgellis. So my challenge as I close this sermon is, keep the eyes of your heart open for you will find God in the most unlikely places, even in the midst of a terrible pandemic.
Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Let us pray. Lord, we know that you're always with us. Open the eyes of our hearts to always recognize your presence in good situations and many times in those that are most difficult. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.